Hey guys, welcome to Dark Knight Nation for our behind the panel interview with Robert Venditti, current writer of Hawkman and known for his runs on both The Green Lantern and The Flash. First off, I want to start by giving a huge thanks to Rob for being an amazing talent in the industry and taking the time out of his busy schedule at New York Comic Con to chat with us. Also, a big thanks to DC Comics for giving me the opportunity to talk it up with one of the best in the business. If you want to check out some of our previous creator interviews or you want to make sure you catch all of the ones to come, make sure to like the video and definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you know when they go out. Also, if you're a fan of comics right now and you're not reading what Robert's putting on the page, you're messing up. I'm sorry. With that out of the way, here's our interview with one of the best writers in comics today, Robert Venditti. Rob, first of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for agreeing to do the interview with me. Uh, I've been following your stuff for quite a while since the beginning of your work on the New 52. So again, thank you for making this happen. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. So you spent a lot of time on characters that don't usually get a lot of limelight, like a Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, but you really do them justice. You've taken a lot of time to show that you understand and that you love these characters. You know, more specifically, you're Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps. You didn't just focus on Hal. You gave us a little bit of time with the Four Corsmen of Earth. And then with Hawkman, you know, it's just a, a character in particular who hasn't gotten a lot of love recently and it's kind of just been left to confusion for most audiences. So for you, what do you, is there something that draws you to to write for characters like that? I mean, really, there's, there's nothing more than the fact that I love the characters, you know? And if, if they haven't been around in a while, that's all the more reason why they deserve to be, you know? I, I, Hawkman is one of those characters. It's one of the foundational characters, not just of DC Comics, but of comic book history. He's not, you know, I didn't grow up reading comics, so I wasn't overly familiar with him from the comic book perspective, but from being a kid and seeing, you know, animated cartoons and things like that, he was always a visual that I was very drawn to. I, I, I've always, I'm also very big into birds, you know, like as a, as a hobbyist, I have bird houses and bird feeders and I do bird watching and all those things. So um, really, it doesn't matter to me if a character is a limelighted character or not. The most important thing for me to write the character is as a character that I respond to positively when I learned about them, whether it's Hawkman or Guy Gardner or Freedom Fighters or whatever it is. No, it's 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 definitely shows in your work that these are characters that you're not writing for the sake of trying to, I guess, move them up in the landscape of popularity. You're writing these characters because you love them and you you know that you can do justice to them, and you've proven that so far. So as a fan, you know, I truly thank you for that. So I guess the the most basic question to ask in, in any interview is in comic books or I guess in literature, storytelling in general, what would you say are are your biggest influences going into doing what you're doing now? Yeah, like I said, I didn't grow up reading comics. I started reading them like in sort of my mid to late 20s. So when I come to a character, I'm not really bringing a lot of uh, familiarity with continuities or memories of reading them when I was a child or anything like that. All of my influences come from more like traditional, you know, what they what they call literary fiction. You know, I, I originally went to college and grad school and, and majored and got my master's in creative writing studying things like Hemingway and Fitzgerald and things like that, which is not to say that I'm a Hemingway or Fitzgerald is not what I'm saying at all, but those are the type of books that I grew up reading and the type of stories that I grew up with. And so for me, that's that's kind of my influence that I bring to the table. And, and I think it benefits me in a lot of ways because when somebody says to me, do you want to write Hawkman? And I don't know anything about Hawkman. And I'm going to sit down and take a very first time research perspective to the character. I'm not bringing with it all of these stories that I've thought about over the years. I don't know what's possible and what's not possible. My very first thought about Hawkman as I started to research him within the first hour was, oh, so he reincarnates across time and space and he's all the same guy. I only think I did that because I didn't only read him as a Golden Age character or as a Silver Age character and experience all those things as separate things. I experienced them all at once and then was able to bring sort of that idea to it. I think that's only possible because I'm coming fresh to the table, you know? No, I mean, it's it's really earnest to, to really go into it and make sure that you've done enough research to know the characters. And it shows, you know, with Hawkman in particular, for me, I, I, I wasn't a Hawkman fan going to comic books. I don't even know if I was a Hawkman fan going into this book. To be completely honest with you, I was a Robert Venditti fan going into a Hawkman book with the expectations of, well... I don't know the character very well, but at least I'm going to get a good story out of it. And for me, being someone who understands the really complicated and, and frankly confusing history of Hawkman, I'm going to this book 
slowly learning more and more about the character and seeing where these different incarnations or iterations of Hawkman are falling into the continuity. So I, I really appreciate that as someone who started kind of looking into it that you're not throwing away anything. You're finding a way to be all inclusive while doing your own thing and, and doing something that has your stamp on it. And not to mention, you know, to give credit where credit's due, Brian Hitch's art is freaking killer. But going on a, a little bit about Hawkman, for you, was there any difficulty kind of leading into Hawkman after the results of Metal and No Justice and all the, the universe-spanning events? Uh, no, we knew about that going in, and uh, it was all part of the tapestry, and I don't think that the series that we're doing would have been possible without Metal because Scott was the one who came in and said that it doesn't just go back to Khufu. Carter Hall goes all the way back 10,000 years, maybe longer, and that was what really opened the door for Brian and I to come in and tell this story and reveal all these new things and for Carter to have all these memories that he had forgotten and all those sorts of things. So uh, that was all part of it. Um, as far as what you were saying earlier, you know, that's the greatest compliment of all for somebody who wasn't a Hawkman fan to come in and to like what we're doing and to understand it and to be able to, to be on board with it. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a story that somebody who's never read Hawkman in their life, they get a story that they enjoy, but if you've been reading Hawkman all your life, we're bringing in all those elements that you like. And as far as Brian being on the book, there's so much beyond just the art that he brings to this title. I mean, obviously the art is, is beautiful and he's an amazing storyteller. But when I say storyteller, I don't just mean in the way he does story visually. I mean in just the way he is collaboratively and the concepts and the ideas and the way that, that we sort of inspire each other. And, and, you know, what I write is better for it because of, of what he brings to it that inspires me and, and brings other ideas that I can then play with. And so it really is a collaborative situation in the best uh, way that it could be. I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up here. You know, again, I can't thank you enough and I can't thank the representatives from DC Comics for letting this happen. So I appreciate it very much. And just know that everything you're trying to do with your work is being accomplished. You know, as someone going into your Green Lantern, after reading Jeff Johns, I feel like nobody but you could have done what you did with Green Lantern. You know, I, as a fan, I appreciate that. And then, then again with Hawkman, it's a character that I largely had, knew nothing about, you got me interested in. And now, frankly, any book that I see your name on, I will buy. So for those of you listening, if you're not picking it up already, go check out Hawkman. Issue 5 is coming out soon, so it's going to be really easy for you to catch up. Again, thank you, Robert, and uh, hope you have a great rest of your con. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed our chat with Rob. If you're not pulling a Robert Venditti title right now, I think you're doing yourself a great disservice. If you're watching this sometime soon after the video airs, Hawkman number 5 is currently released. If you're watching this from the far-flung future, go find yourself a trade of his Hawkman, Green Lantern, or whatever project we're lucky enough to have Rob on. Rob, if you're getting a chance to listen to this, I can't express enough gratitude for the chance to chat comics with you, and I can't wait to see what you have coming up next. If you guys want to get a chance to chat with Rob a little bit for yourself, the link to his Twitter is down in the description below. He's a really cool guy to chat with, so I hope you all go give him a follow. Also, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, comment, and share the video to help us grow. To stay updated on all of our content, you can click that little bell button and follow us on Twitter. If you have any suggestions for new topics, let us know. Otherwise, let's just chat comics and all things geek. Catch you guys in the next video from Dark Knight Nation.